Folks, today I'm going to be looking at doing a spot of plastering, which is always a messy game when I'm involved, so stick around and we'll see how I manage. Last week we saw the main room and the utility area all skimmed out but there was no time in the day nor had I allowed for this room to get plastered. Unfortunately, if I'd thought about it I could have probably got both done in one hit. It would have cost a bit more but um, rather than pay for another half day to come in and do the, the one or two sets needed for this room, I'm going to tackle it myself. There's no natural light in this room which is always a plus point when it comes to plastering. Uh, because really as soon as you've got decent lighting, natural light especially, then it really does pick up on the imperfections. But we're, I've done the en suites and things like that in the house and I can, I'm can i fairly confident we can manage. So this is no tutorial because it is not my forte, but hopefully you'll be able to pick something up and hopefully maybe look at learning a little bit yourself from someone far more qualified than I am. I dare say there's going to be a little bit of uh, cleaning up to do from the last plastering I did, which was a good while ago, but usually I get away using the SDS drill with this mixer uh, and just an SDS chuck on there. First things first, I need to look at wrapping up this boiler a bit. So all of this area is going to be completely concealed within a cupboard. But I know that I kind of, so I'll probably what I'll do is skim the exposed area and kind of feather it in to the bit that's going to be completely hidden. Just put a little bit over our valves because the last thing I want is plaster in our isolating valve. You can just use disposable gloves or something over there, it's quite handy. Right, everything is now scrimmed up and like I did last time, the door lining's not ready, so I've just uh, tacked on a, a, a bead of timber there to give me that lip to plaster up to. It's time to commit, let's mix it up. Here goes nothing, probably end up with more of it on my head than anything else. Oh, right in the face. Well, I was going to do just the ceiling in the first set, but I think I've got a bit too much mixed up. Uh, so I'm going to do that back wall, shouldn't matter too much because it's all concealed. Otherwise it's quite good to do alternate walls so you're not troweling in against a wet wall. But if I do that one, I've done the little section there, do that one in the ceiling, finish those and then I'll do the opposite walls. nice thing about plastering is if you get the timings right, you can have a cup of tea in between coats. Not too much plaster on me yet. So I've had a good clean out ready for the second coat. I need to make sure that's kind of touched dry. So the first coat really, you don't want to be too pretty about it as long as it's flat and it's on. Uh, and like I said, I've done uh, two walls on the ceiling. The walls being quite minor ones that are going to be hidden anyway. So. Um, that means I can do the second coat on those, get all that floated off, and then it'll be hard for me to trowel up to on the second tooth. As with all plastering, keeping things clean 
and organised is key. So I've had a good wash up between coats. And the second coat I'll make a little bit thin, thinner, I guess, looser. Um, just so we can get an even smoother trowel on there. Uh, but again, we're not looking for it to be smooth at this point. So that's why it looks a little bit artexy. So you may be asking, why on earth did I leave this room to the pros? And I've mentioned that I, you know, on a budget level, it's saving some money. But actually it all stems from what happened last night. I was out with some friends from church and, and we were talking about what we'd been up to that week. And, uh, and Matt said to me, he said, what, you know, what, what we've been up to on the house. And I said I had a plaster in skimming the walls. To which the look of disgust he gave me that I had someone else in, because he's so used to seeing me doing everything, um, was enough to urge me to give it a go today and prove to myself that I could manage. Not that it will be anywhere near as good as what's been done in the other room. But there's always a chance I can pull it off. That, that's a killer. You get plaster in your hair. firm up a little bit more. Um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about DIY versus trade. Um, and I don't think it should be versus, but I do get quite a lot of comments from obviously people in the trade uh, may end up watching some of these videos too. And I know the last plastering video, there were quite a lot of plasterers had perhaps seen it. And they probably only watched about 30 seconds of it. I think the, the title of the video was anyone can plaster with a question mark and sure enough you know I, I started off and I was kind of traveling on and, and then later in the video I'm talking through and I'm saying anyone can do it anyone can have a go at it and you'll be able to get to a certain level but you're never going to be quite as happy as you would be if you've got it done properly likewise if you've got really tall ceilings big expanses of wall lots of natural light there are so many issues there that you're just gonna you're gonna either take far too long on it or you're just not gonna be happy and you're gonna be better off getting a plasterer in but that doesn't mean you can't give it a go and for smaller sections you know a little bedroom wall or some repair work or a little uh, wardrobe or an ensuite you can't you know worst comes to worst you can get it skimmed over and if you providing you've got the basic tools anyway What's a bag of plaster? Fiver? Six quid? Well actually, you know, you could be £12 down at the end of a, a day's attempt and it's still not the end of the world if you had to get someone in. So don't be put off trying it. But from what I've learned, having been through 12, 14 rooms of renovation, it's the one thing, or one of the things I will quite happily hand over to, uh, to someone else. You can do all the prep work, you can do all the plastering, uh, the plasterboarding, you can scrim it all and do as much as you can um, and then you know get them to come in and do that. And it's a one transformation. For me it's like a little bit of a treat. They come in, I'll be either working alongside them or I'll be in the house doing something else and, and you can go in there after they left and, and it's like a little push and if you're slogging away DIY like we do every little kind of boost like that really counts so if you're a professional plasterer yes you're better than us and, I, and it should be left to you guys most of the time but don't knock people having a go right five minutes to go and I think we can just about do it I've done the wash up all the buckets which gave it five minutes to dry enough for me to do a final trowel 
which will be good enough. Not that you'll ever see that bit. Right, I'm, I'm kind of uh, getting to the end of the first set that I've done and that's the only set I'm going to get done today because I just had the call that it's ballet lessons in 10 minutes so I'm going to have to really uh, put my foot down to get this done because plastering is one of those things that you can't just drop halfway through and come back to. I can hear my phone going, that's my call for ballet. Tim? Yeah? Five two, come on! I, I've been told off now. Right, out of time. We'll come back to this in a bit. Right, so we're a couple of days on now. The ceiling and those two walls are bone dry now, helped by the boiler, I guess, being in here. Um, and actually very smooth, um, especially the ceiling. I've gone just slightly stiffer than the last time because I really was making a mess the first set, but uh, I think this is about right now. Do you know what guys, after having a look at it today, ready for painting, I'm pretty impressed. I think we just about pulled it off. Now, I wouldn't go doing the main rooms of the house, and I certainly wouldn't go doing any tall, full on three metre ceilings, but we managed, and we've got a good flat wall, nice sharp corners, and I think we've done ourselves DIY proud. <sighs> On to the decorating. And my closing point, if anyone can have a moan about people telling them that they can do a job as good as a professional, then try my job. Try being a professional photographer and turning up to a wedding and having Great Aunt Mabel stick a point and shoot in your face and say that she can do a better job than you. She can't, Great Aunt Mabel.